This is Tech Math 2, and it's a Friday, not that anybody really cares, and we're in section, oh, you care, 10-1, and uh, due to global warming, it's going to warm up to 80 degrees during the, uh, the weekend, so that is really cool, and we're finally going to get some decent weather. So, uh, what chapter 10 has to do with is uh, our signs, cosines, and other things. And what we're going to do is we're going to have there's some point on an, an xy plane. That point has an x coordinate and a y coordinate, wherever it is. So y and x. And now we're going to we're going to define sines and cosines in turn in terms of those x and y's. Back in the last chapter, we did sines and cosines. You said that the the sine of theta was the the side opposite. divided by the hypotenuse. So that, that's one way to look at it. But now we're going to say, well, not only is that the case, but I have a thing here called r. And my r is going to be the square root of uh, x squared plus y squared. What are we calling an r? Well, because there could be a circle involved. And um, and that circle would have radius r. Well, that's pretty bad, isn't it? Um, anyway, so there, there we go. I got a, got a circle there of radius r. If I could have gotten up to the point. All right, well, that being the case, then I'm going to redefine my sine of the angle. And we, we forgot to put the angle in. So there's theta. Theta is coming up this way. As uh, y over r. And I'm going to redefine cosine as x over r. And I'm going to have tangent as uh, y over x. And then I'm going to have cosecant as r over y. And secant. How did I, why did I change the angle anyway? Pretty silly. There we go. Back to theta out of phi. Uh, y over r and cotangent as uh, x over y. So I'm, I'm going to do the same. Gonna, those are all going to be the same. And then I'm going to say, well, if I'm, if I'm looking at the xy plane, so there's x and there's y, and I'm, and I'm thinking about the sine function, then the sine function is going to be positive in the first quadrant. The sine function is going to be positive in the second quadrant. The sine function is going to be negative in the third quadrant. The sine function is going to be negative in the fourth quadrant. So we name these 1, 2, 3, 4 as I go around. And then I say, well, how about cosine? Well, cosine is going to be positive in the first quadrant, negative in the second, negative in the first, and uh, third, and positive in the fourth. And then I look at tangent, and I say, well, tangent is going to be positive in the first quadrant. Tangent is going to be negative in the second. Tangent, if I could spell tangent, going to be positive in the third. Tangent is going to be negative in the fourth quadrant. And then I, I so I know that's something that, that I can draw and memorize and, and have a good feel for. Um, when we get back to, to drawing these things, the sine function goes like that. And uh, here's the first quadrant, there's the second quadrant. Here's the third quadrant. And there's the fourth quadrant. So you can see that it is in fact positive, positive, negative, negative when you, when you draw a picture of the, the sine function itself. And then um, we have the, the normal chart that we would use for, um, yeah, we're not going to use it. Yeah, we will. Why not? Uh, sine, cosine, tangent, theta, theta, theta. Um, do we have to put down the cosecant and the secant? And, uh, and the cotangent while we're doing it. 
or are we going to run a row? Okay, so, so zero, um, sine is zero, cosine is one, tangent is zero, cosecant is undefined because I'm dividing by zero. Secant's going to be one, and um, the cotangent's going to be undefined because I'm dividing by zero. At uh, 30 degrees or pi over six, depending on how we how you want to look at it. I've got a one half. I got a square root of three over two. I've got a um, what do I have? I have a square root of three. No, I don't have a square root of three. Um, sine one half divided by the square root of three over two. So I got the square root of three over three. Um, a two. A um, Two, the square root of three over two, and what is this guy? This is going to be three. Three? Either three or the square root of three. It's going to be the square root of three, right? Square root of three, okay. Pi over four, 45 degrees. Um, square root of two over two, square root of two over two, one. Um, hmm. This is going to be I think just the square root of two. Square root of two, square root of two, and one. One? Yeah, one. And then uh, pi over six, pi over three, pi over three or sixty degrees, square root of three over two, um, one half, square root of three. Um, two, let's see, um, two, the square root, two over two, is, that's part of the square root of three. No, it can't be the square root of three. What the heck? How did I mess that one up? All right, so I don't have this guy right, so I won't put him down. I'll try to get this guy right. One over that, so that'd be the two. 2 square root of 3 over 3. Okay, so this guy is 2 square root of 3 over 3. Uh, what's this guy? 2, 2, and uh, I guess he'd be square root of 3 over 3. And then uh, pi over 2, 90 degrees. I'd have 1, I'd have 0, I'd have undefined. I have um, one. I would have um, one defined, and I would have zero. Okay, so I, I I could do that. Big deal. All right, so I did that. I and I can pass my SAT exam and whatever. Um, if you look in the front of the cover of your book, you um, don't have that. Bummer. So you have to remember it. But your calculator is going to give it to you anyway, so I wouldn't really worry too much about it. Okay, well, back to drawing a angle in standard position. Now, that sounds like something we do in sixth grade, right? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's about it. So we, I've got 30 degrees and standard position would mean I'm at 30 degrees right there. Okay, and I look at number six. And I look at standard position. All right, so if I go around once, that's 360. 360 plus another 60 would be um, right there. So that would be minus 420 degrees. All right. Uh, questions 7 through 14 are nice and weasel worded. So we'll look at number eight, and we have 175 degrees, and we want find the smallest positive and largest negative coterminal angle in standard position for each of the following. What do you think about that? What does coterminal mean? It's in the same spot. 
Okay, so if I got a, if I got a, a guy sitting here, then coterminal means I come here and I, I'm, I'm in the same spot, or and I'm in the same spot. So the, no matter which way I go. So now I want the smallest positive one. All right, so smallest positive. Uh, let's see, uh, 175 degrees. Oh, yeah, 175 degrees. That's, that works, yeah. And then I want the um, the smallest, the largest, the largest, largest, largest negative one. So if a negative infinity would be the smallest negative one that I could have, right? And minus 0. 0.00001 would be pretty large, a very large negative guy. See how that works? That's why I say it's 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 weasel learning. Okay, so that means I'm um, I'm coming this way. I've got 180 plus five more minus 185 would be the largest negative at coterminal angle. Okay, so it's it's perfectly okay. Don't worry about it, you just miss it on the next test anyway. So I got minus 500 degrees. Okay, so if I go 360 on there, 360, 460, 4, 500 and something, I'm too far. So the, the angle's here somewhere. All right, well, if I take minus 3, minus 500, and I add 360 to it, what do I get? I get um, 140. All right, so the largest negative number is going to be minus 140. Way to go, minus 140 degrees. And that's this one. All right, so now I want the smallest positive one. All right, so if I have 360 and I subtract 140 from it, I'll get 220, right? So the smallest positive guy is going to be 220 degrees. All right, enough of that. Turn the page. Draw a graph for the angle and standard position of these terminal sides. Okay, well, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. We'll go over here to the gallery and get some... Uh, some cool stuff. Um, graphing, there we go. Graphing, pictures, there we go, an XY plane. There we go. So now we'll um, do number 15. We want a uh, 15 is uh, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3. Right there, 15. And then we'll change colors and do 16, 4, minus 2. I'm sure that you guys are, are planning on this thing being on your next test. 4, minus 2. There's 16. Let's hope so, because if it is, it'd be pathetically easy. 17, minus 1, 3. There's minus 1, 1, 2, 3. And 17. And one more, because that's all colors I have. Number 20, well, I, I probably have more colors, 2, 0, 2, 0, number 20. All right, can we handle that one? Ben, can you handle that problem? I can try. You can try? But, but you have to bring your crayons in, right? Right. If you don't have your crayons, you won't be able to do it. That is an issue, yes. So if you, don't have, if you didn't bring your crayons in for a final, you won't be able to do that one. Find all the <coughs> values of everything. For the following guy. Okay, so number 22 is. Oh, I have to do 21. Okay, I was going to do 22 because it looks cooler than 21, but I'll do 21. So problem number 21. I'm at 3 minus 4. So now I have to do is find r. So r is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus minus 4 squared. And I really didn't have to do that because I know it was a 3, 4, 5 triangle. And my other side is 5, right? So you remember from 10th grade geometry that there's two triangles. There's a 3, 4, 5 triangle. 
and there's a 5, 12, 13 triangle, right? Yeah, 5, 12, 13 triangle. And those are the triangles that are always on your SAT and ACT exams. So you, you have those two triangles, you know everything about those two triangles, and whenever they show up on your exam, you just put down the answer. Anyway, back to the sine guy, sine of theta. Um, the uh, y component divided by the, the uh, um, radius, the cosine of theta. The x component divided by the radius. The tangent of theta. The uh, y guy divided by the x guy. The cosecant of theta minus 5 over 4. You don't really care where the minus sign is. This guy here, we would be, the minus sign is would be out in front. That'd be okay, too. Um, the secant of theta, 5 over 3. The cotangent of theta, minus 3 over 4. Okay, good enough. We'll do, uh, do number 30. This type of problem is, is, uh, would be allowed on a quiz or a test um, because it, um, whereas the one where you're graphing things on the graph, I probably wouldn't allow such a thing. All right, so um, 30, we have 2, 0, and r is going to be the square root of 2. Okay, well, that seems general. So the sine of theta, 2 over the square root of 2. But your ninth grade algebra instructor wouldn't like that, so she'd like you to rationalize the denominator to be the square root of 2. All right, so cosine theta, 0 over the square root of 2. Well, that's, who did this? What's wrong with the back row? They should have told me I was hosed already. All right, the sine of theta, 0 divided by the square root of 2, 0. All right, so that's better. 2 divided by the square root of 2, rationalize the denominator, and I end up with 2 divided by 2 times square root of 2, also known as square root of 2. Tangent, um, undefined, because I'm defining, I'm dividing by 0, so that's not good. Um, the uh, cosecant, um, um, dividing by 0, so that's not good, undefined. Um, the cosine, cosine, cosecant. The secant, whatever it is, I don't, I'll get it right. Secant. The secant, 1 over the square root of 2, but I have to rationalize my denominator, so it'll be the square root of 2 over 2. And the tangent would be cotangent. The cotangent would be uh, 0. Okay, good enough. Twenty twenty nine. Come here, let me do thirty. Twenty nine. <laughs> I'm gonna give you a break. Gonna give me a break? Alright, so I got I got zero minus three. So that sort of implies R is the square root of three. Alright, so co uh, sine. Sine theta. Um Minus 3 over the square root of 3. We rationalize the denominator and we get uh, minus the square root of 3. Uh, cosine theta, 0. Tangent theta, uh, undefined because I'm divided by 0. Cosecant theta, uh, minus the square root of 3. Over three, right? Why is hmm? the radius square root of three? Three square root of two, three times the square root of three is three. No, but three why divided. Is the radius. Wouldn't the radius be just three? Because if you graph zero, negative three, it's just three away from the center. R is equal to the square root of three squared, which is three, right? I was going to say something profound, but I guess I can just say you're right. Did I do the last one wrong, too? I don't know. I didn't yeah. watch that one. Yeah, <laughs> typical. Yeah, this one's wrong, too. So this should just be a 2. And um, 
No, these are all wrong, except with the undefined ones. I got the undefined ones right. Yeah. So that's half the half the battle. So I got partial credit. All right. So sine would be um, zero, right? Yeah, zero, and cosine would be one, and that's undefined, and this guy would be one. Really? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, well, back to the one I was doing that I was getting wrong before. Okay, so R is, in fact, 3. So sine of theta minus 1. Cosine theta 0. Tangent theta undefined. Changing colors. Cosecant theta minus 1. Secant theta undefined. Um, cotangent theta zero. Well, that was pathetically easy. Uh, I have two minutes to do a problem. Let's see, is that long enough to sing a song? Anybody got a good song to sing out there? Yeah, I guess that's probably good enough. Anybody uh, know uh, the